Hey everybody, what's going on? Thanks for swinging by. I sure do appreciate it. If this is your first time with the channel, my name is Mark. Oh, hi Mark. Welcome to Fit and Fire. Let's get into this video. This time we're going to be looking at something that's a bit controversial for a lot of people in the AK community. Not only is it because it's from a certain manufacturer, but it's also an adaptation of a certain firearm that has kind of quote unquote brought it into the 21st century as much as you possibly could for this particular firearm. And what are we talking about? We are going to be talking about the PSA crank. And um, I'm going to tell you right off the get go, this has actually been a lot of fun to shoot. And for some of those purists out there who are like, oh, it's not a true crank. I understand what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. And I don't necessarily disagree with you. However, there's specific reasons why we are seeing this set up the way it is in 2024. Now this was introduced uh, last year at SHOT Show and a lot of people were like wear a crank with PSA like day in and day out and they finally released it this year. And with that uh, we have seen some issues with the first iteration of these rifles. We'll touch on that in this video but um, at the very least this has actually ran better than expected, uh, at least from my perspective. I've only got about 300 rounds through this. And um, collectively, with that 300 rounds, we've got it to 1,500 rounds. Now you might be asking, how is that possible? Well, full disclosure, I'm not getting paid to say anything good, bad, or indifferent about PSA or the crank. Um, PSA didn't send this to me. They don't know that I'm doing this review. Uh, this was actually lent to me by H-Town Werewolf. Uh, Rodrigo is a really cool dude. Uh, he's down in the Southern Texas area. I got to meet him at Clash Bash and have been following his YouTube channel for quite a bit, um, last six plus months or whatever. And um, we got to talking about the new crinks that are out on the market, whether it be the Palmetto State Armory one or the Riley Defense version of it and um i was like man i, I really want to get my hands on one of these but i just i just don't want to spend the money on it right now i've got other projects i'm working on and he's like hey man why not why don't you just borrow mine and i was like that would be super cool so we talked on saturday sunday he comes swinging by my campsite and he's like here you go dude and i'm like awesome this is really cool so needless to say um we've got one in our hands he's put 1200 rounds through it and uh it hasn't been perfect we'll talk about that in this video i've got 300 rounds through this and it ran just fine we even got 90 rounds through this suppressed as well so let's dive into this if you don't know what a crank off style firearm is or you don't know what a crank is uh, it is the AKS 74U, which is going to be traditionally chambered in 545 by 39. Now, what a lot of people will tell you is that this is not a true crank. And yeah, for those purists, I 100% agree this is not a true crank. Um, obviously, it's not chambered in 545 by 39. Um, it has a side rail optics mount. That's not something that was uh, traditionally on the original cranks as well. So this has strayed away from the original version. However, what I will say is the reason why Palmetto State Armory went with a 5.56 version is because with sanctions and everything else that's going on around the world, Finding 545 by 39 is extremely difficult and in some cases very cost prohibitive. You're looking at anywhere between 70 cents a round to a dollar a round, depending on when and where you buy it. Um, it is vastly more expensive than 556 right now. So to introduce something like this to the market, it just made sense for PSA to start with 556. Those individuals who want a 545 by 39 crank, they will get their opportunity in the future. And we're also going to see other calibers like 762 by 39, and there's even talk of 300 blackout as well. So take all of that for what you will. At the very least, we have this one right here, and it's been a lot of fun to shoot. Now, 
like I had mentioned, it hasn't been perfect. In the first 1,200 rounds that Rodrigo has put through it, um, he ran into a lot of issues when it came to steel case ammo. And um, a lot of people will say go. that if it can't right. run steel case, it doesn't deserve brass. So, and I totally agree with that as well. But uh, he so went through and is, uh, um, worked on the chamber the a little bit. Essentially what he did was he took a hand drill and a brass brush and uh, some honing compound and went in and honed out the chamber ever so slightly. <clears throat> and according to him, that really fixed the problem. This has a um, serial number of 408 on here. So uh, still fairly early in the run, I would say. And that's kind of what you would expect with a brand new firearm. It's going to have some kinks to it. It's probably going to have to get worked out um, not only through customer feedback, but um, Palmetto State Armory's own internal R&D. So that is one of the downsides to this. And that's one of the, been the biggest complaints about Palmetto State Armory is their quality control to ensure that the things that they're releasing to the market are going to work. Um, as it should from the get-go. I mean, we did see some issues with the AK-74s that they released with some premature wear on the front trunnion and bolts, um, but seemingly that has been corrected with this version of it. Has it been fully corrected? I don't know, I can't tell you that. This is my only exposure to a 5.56 AK from PSA. Um, I've shot some at like SHOT Show and stuff like that, but realistically at the end of the day, uh, the only thing that I have really looked at is this one right here. So let's talk about it. First 300 rounds, again, um, it was a lot of fun to shoot. Uh, really smooth as you would expect it to be, you know, getting into that 1200 to 1500 round mark, the action on this should be very smooth. Um, I do like the enhanced safety lever that they have on here. Uh, similar, similar, not exactly the same, but very similar to what you expect from like Krebs Customs. The safety lever is tuned, so it's very easy to manipulate. Being able to charge this was really, really easy, and it's super flat shooting from what I've experienced not only with my SAM-5, my M90, uh, the Arsenal 106 that I have. Uh, this has been probably one of the more flatter shooting uh, 5.56 AKs that I own. And that is coming with an 8.4 inch barrel. That's one of the things that was really interesting. Normally you get uh, shorter barrels with 5.56 and it gets to be um, pretty punchy to say the least, but this has been a lot of fun to shoot. So there is that. I do have an optic on here, so you can tell that it does have a uh, side mount on here. So we are going to utilize this red dot and do some accuracy. I'll look at it from 50 yards. We'll look at 100 yards. We'll try a couple of different ammunition types like, uh, you know, M193, M855. I've got some um, Hornady Black 75 grain boat tail hollow point. I've got some Hornady Black 72 or 62 grain FMJs. I've got some Frontier 75 grain and then PSA's um, AAC ammo. It's 77 OTMs. We can run all of that and get groups. I would expect that a short barreled firearm like this, groups on it's probably not going to be all that great, uh, probably two to three inches, I would imagine, but just shooting at the range and kind of dump mag dumping into trash, uh, it was a lot of fun to shoot and seemed fairly accurate, especially with the uh, iron sights. Uh, I'm pretty sure that Rodrigo already zeroed it with the iron sights. Um, he did send me the red dot afterwards, so I haven't had that out to the range quite yet. Now, like I said, I have ran about 90 rounds through this uh, suppressed and I have been using the resilient Putnik and this thing has been <laughs> a lot of fun to shoot. Uh, it just has this vibe to it. I mean, just look at this thing, get the mag in. Look at that, man. That, that just looks super, super cool. Um, and it's 
really helps mitigate that recoil from uh, 5.56223. So um, no complaints whatsoever with this so far, so far. Now I am keeping myself objective when it comes to this type of firearm because I know that a lot of people like to throw hate at PSA and I understand why. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and pretend that they are perfect. Um, they are, <laughs> their reputation is uh, about as equal as uh, SIG right now. So, <laughs> um, but I will say that this has been a lot of fun to shoot. All right, so let's go ahead and take a real quick look underneath the hood to show you guys what 1500 rounds of wear is going to look like with this. Very dirty, but what I can tell you is that I'm not seeing any type of premature wear on that front trunnion, which is really, really nice. It is, <laughs> it's pretty dirty in there, but I hope that we're not going to see any further issues when it comes to um, premature wearing of the trunnion and stuff like that from PSA. So uh, we'll see uh, how it turns out as we approach 2,500 rounds. Uh, that being said, the bolt's looking good. I don't see any type of premature wear, uh, no peening uh, that is significant that would cause me to be concerned at all. So that is good. And then the carrier tail uh, looks pretty decent as well. There is a little slight peening, but nothing that is alarming uh, to say the least. All right, so guys, this is me from the future and looks like we are seeing actually some peening on the hammer face, uh, as you can kind of see there. And uh, that's where it's interfacing the carrier. And then on the hammer face itself, there's a little bit of an indention on there um, that looks like where it's hitting the firing pin. Hopefully you guys can see that. I don't know if you can, there we go. But uh, yeah, um, have to keep an eye on that and see what happens from there. All right, so there you have it. There is Palmetto State Armory's adaptation or a version of the AKS-74U Krinkoff. Um, again, I understand a lot of people are like, oh, it's not a true crink and um, you know all that type of stuff. I totally understand all of that, but what I will say is for individuals who are not purists, who are just interested in getting their hands into something that is like golden eye-esque, you know, this is probably going to be the most cost-effective way to do it. Um, this is uh, retailing for about a thousand dollars, so depending on the different types of features that you get uh, with the brace, without the brace, uh, JMAC Customs, hand guards or not, you're looking somewhere around that $950 to $1,200 range mark. And uh, that's going to be a lot more doable than the $3,000 to $3,500 for an actual crank. So uh, I think that this is a viable option. We're gonna do a lot more testing with this to see what the accuracy is like, obviously see what the wear pattern of the internals are going to be like as we approach that 2,500 round mark. Um, and uh, it's reliability as well. So, so there you have it. There is the PSA crank and I leave it to you guys. What do you guys say? Is the PSA crank something that you would reach out and grab if you are a AK connoisseur? Um, I, I've had a lot of fun with it. And to be frankly honest with you, if I'm able to free up some money here in the future, I probably will end up getting one of my own just because uh, having something that is an 8.4 inch, 4150 steel barrel um, that is easily suppressed. I think that's going to be super, super cool. It's just got a vibe of its own. And uh, yeah, so we're also going to get it out to one of the two gun matches and see how well it does there and just have a lot of fun with it. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get out of here. Thank you so much for swinging by. If you haven't already checked out the Live Laugh LARP podcast, I encourage you guys to do so. Uh, we're having a lot of fun with that. We got a lot of guests lined up and uh, hopefully you guys will get a chance to check it out. Link in the description and in the pinned comment. As always, here comes a high five. Catch you guys later. Freedom through strength. Bye, y'all.